Good afternoon. St. Anthony of Padua's parish family welcomes all who have gathered for our liturgy for the fifth Sunday of Lent. You are kindly requested at this time to turn off all electronic devices, including cell phones. The grain of wheat must die to produce fruit. Such dying must be cultivated by obedience and by our covenant with God, rooted in love and forgiveness. This liturgy is being offered for the happy repose of the soul of Frederick Stankovich on the first anniversary of his, pa his passing. Let us begin our prayer by joining in singing, Lord of all hopefulness, please stand. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, and what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, blessed Mary, the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. By your help we beseech you, Lord our God, may we walk eagerly in that same charity with which, out of love for the world, you sent your Son and handed him over to death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their families the day I took them by the hand and led them forth from the land of Egypt. They broke my covenant, and I had to show myself their master, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will place my law within them and write it upon their hearts. I will be their God, 
and they shall be my people. No longer will they have to need to teach their friends and relatives how to know the Lord. All from least to greatest shall know me, says the Lord, for I will forgive their evil doing and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. From out of the depths I cry to you, Lord. Oh, hear the sound of A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. In the days when Christ Jesus was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverence. Son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered. And when he was made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. The word of the Lord. Glory, praise, and honor 
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Some Greeks who had come to worship on the Passover feast came to Philip, who was at Bethsaida in Galilee, and asked him, Sir, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew, and Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Amen, amen, I say to you, Unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it, and whoever hates his life in this world will preserve it for life eternal. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am there also my servant be. The Father will honor whoever serves me. I am troubled now, yet what should I say? Father, save me from this hour, but it was for this purpose that I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and will glorify it again. The crowd there heard it and said it was thunder, but others said an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered and said, This voice did not come for my sake, but for yours. Now is the time of judgment on the world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw everyone to myself. He said this indicating the kind of death he would die. The Gospel of the Lord. Life is full of significant moments, and you and I know that. And while there are two, no two lives that are exactly the same, there are certain milestones that are shared by many of us. There are certain points on our journey that signify a new, a new chapter, a new stage in our lives. And most of those are pretty easy to name, right? Like, you can, we all remember, like, our first day in kindergarten, or your first crush, or getting your driver's license, or the first job that you had, or graduating from high school or college, or your wedding, or ordination, the birth of your children, the death of someone close to you, you get the picture. But there is one significant moment that kind of sneaks up on all of us, one that we hardly ever think about until we are faced with it. And when we reach this particular point in life, it can be a little challenging. It can be a little frustrating. And for some of us, can be a little scary. And I'm talking about that point in time when all of us are faced with downsizing. Okay? Bet you didn't think, all right, downsizing. Now, for many of us who have already gone through it, it can be challenging, it can be a real pain, but it can be very satisfying when it's all through. And if you're in the middle of it as we speak, Remember, things will get better. And for those of you who have not reached this point yet, all I can say is good luck, right? Now, you probably think that it's not a big deal. And you might be right. 
But the odds are that it will be harder than you think. Downsizing is kind of an odd word, isn't it? Because I say that because downsizing, if you think about it, before we are able to downsize, what's the other end of it? We have to upsize, right? So if you think about it, isn't that what we're doing most of our life? We are in the process of upsizing. Just think about where you live, okay? So you go and you go from your room at your parents' place and maybe start out, go to college and maybe share a dorm with a couple of people and then maybe move into a tiny apartment and then maybe into a condo and that might follow with a townhouse or an inexpensive starter. And then, of course, if you have the means, it hardly ever stops there. And then each new house becomes a little bigger than the one before. And, of course, with all of these various moves comes the accumulation of stuff, right? Furniture, clothes, vehicles, books, TVs and such. How about tools and bikes and snowblowers and exercise equipment and patio furniture and kitchen gadgets? And the list can go on and on. And the truth be told, most of us accumulate all of this stuff and we're not even really aware about how much stuff we have because there's no way we could possibly use all the stuff that we have. You know, it just kind of happens. One minute we're living in a single bedroom in our parents' house and the next moment, gosh, we've got more junk than we know what to do with. Yeah. Of course, it really isn't an issue. We don't even give it a second thought until that day comes when you have to move into a smaller place. And then that becomes a big issue. And most of us would probably claim that that's not a big issue. I'm not really holding on to my stuff. It's only people that matter. People are important. All of these other things, they're just things. They're just stuff. And you would be very right in saying that. But when the time comes to get rid of stuff, letting go of the things that maybe brought you joy at times, or memories, or whatever, it can be a very difficult decision. And in fact, some people completely avoid that issue by paying a little extra to have all of that extra stuff put into storage, all right? And that's where it sits until they die and then the next generation has to figure out what to do with, get rid of what the previous generation was unwilling to do. Now, of course, we don't just accumulate material things as we live our life, do we? There's a lot of things that we accumulate in our lives, and some of them are not very good. We can accumulate resentment and prejudice and fears and our egos, our sense of entitlement, or maybe an unhealthy lack of self-worth. How about selfishness or apathy or feelings of despair or helplessness. How about cynicism? Maybe even hatred. And again, you get the picture. These are the kind of things that can pile up over a lifetime. And this is all the kind of stuff that we really don't need. But it's more than that. Because the list, that small list that I just gave in many ways is more dangerous than the accumulation of any number of material things. For these are feelings and attitudes and ways of looking at the world that can really weigh us down and truly keep us from being the person that God created us to be. Truly keep us from being that grain of wheat. Amen, amen, I say to you, 
Unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. There is probably nothing more difficult to believe than the implications that flow from what we just heard from the mouth of Jesus in today's gospel passage from John. And in a certain sense, these implications can be even more difficult than in believing the incarnation or the resurrection, because these are supernatural events that are very mind-boggling, but which, at least on the surface, seem to demand very little from us. Not only are these verses that we just heard the opposite of how we usually think that things should work, but they also demand very much from us. They demand everything, our whole selves. They demand that we lay down our lives for others. This losing one lo one's life to find it, this laying down one's life to save it, this dying in order to rise to a life that will bear much fruit is the great and puzzling paradox of Christianity. It's a profound and it's a deep and it's a mysterious truth for sure but also it's a tremendous stumbling block at times for so many, and that can include you and I. This journey in which we find ourselves is not a quest to see what we can get out of life. It's really about what can we give to this life? What can we put into it? What emptiness can be filled when we pour our lives into a void? And so let's let this Lent become for us a springboard to downsize whatever we need to let go. Start letting God take away from us whatever's just taking up that space thereby allowing God to fill us with that grace that only he can give. And maybe through this downsizing and removing all that extra junk and clutter that weighs us down, we'll find ourselves living, truly living well for the first time. Together now, let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead 
and the life of the world to come. Amen. With the hope that comes from the death and resurrection of Jesus, we offer our prayers to our Heavenly Father. Our response to each petition will be, Lord, have mercy, and so we pray. That the members of the church may grow in faith and live more fully in God's love, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have hear mercy. Us. That our government leaders may be blessed with the strength and wisdom they need to carry out their public service, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. That as Jesus laid down his life for us, so we may find strength to sacrifice ourselves for others, especially the poor, the weak, the unborn, and the unwanted. We pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who are preparing to enter the church in full communion at the Easter Vigil, we pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the people of the parish and all families, that our merciful Father may continue to bless us, keep us, and help us to grow together in love and faith. We pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That the sick may unite their suffering with the suffering of Christ who carries our burdens with us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have died, especially Frederick Stankavich, and are recently deceased, that they may rest from their labors in God's loving care. We pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all the intentions we hope hold close to our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. I'll now conclude with a prayer to combat the coronavirus pandemic. Most merciful and trying God, we come to you in our weakness, we come to you in our fear. We come to you with trust, for you alone are our hope. We place before you the disease present in our world, and we turn to you in our time of need. Bring wisdom to doctors, give understanding to scientists endow caregivers with compassion and generosity, bring healing to those who are ill, protect those who are most at risk, give comfort to those who have lost a loved one, welcome those who have died into your eternal home, stabilize our communities, unite us in our compassion, remove all fear from our hearts, fill us with confidence in your care. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Hear us, Almighty God, and have, having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as true man, he wept for Lazarus, his friend, and as eternal God, raised him from the tomb. Just as taking pity on the human race, he leads us by sacred mysteries to new life. Through him, the hosts of angels adore your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exalting praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Alfred our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should have been my word. Only say the word. For those who are unable to be with us today, and those who are unable to receive the Eucharist at this time, I'll now pray the prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament, and I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and I, and I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Just want to take a brief moment again while everybody's here, just to go over a little bit about the schedule then coming up for Holy Week. And this goes along with my homily about all that stuff that we came lingering with. Uh, one of the greatest ways that we're able to do this is to turn to God, to help us downsize on all of that stuff that really is inhibiting us from receiving His grace. And one of those is really receiving the Sacrament of Reconciliation. The pandemic has really put a, made us think about how we can do things, and I know so many of you look forward to the idea of our Advent and Lenten penance services, when we have a number of priests at one time that 
we can accommodate this and that way you know that you can come and you can go to different priests and to do this. So we weren't able to do anything last Easter at that time and even last Christmas we couldn't do it. Uh, but we're going to try modification of it this time. So we will have uh, additional confessors here for penance, but for here at St. Anthony's, if you look at the, if, when you look at the schedule, on the week of Holy Week, on Monday and Tuesday, both Father Keith and I, and possibly Father Elias, so there'll be at least two of us here, not three, at four o'clock here at St. Anthony's on Monday and Tuesday of Holy Week. So there could be two or three of us here at four o'clock. We will also be at Our Lady of Mercy. The three of us will be at Our Lady of Mercy at 7 p.m. on Monday and Tuesday. So you can go either here or there. At St. Jane's, they won't have as many confessors, but they will have a number of them. They, were, uh, they will be at 7 o'clock on Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday. So you can go to St. Jane's for Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday. You can come to St. Anthony's Monday and Tuesday at 4, or Our Lady of Mercy on Monday and Tuesday at 7. And of course, on Good Friday, there's extended confession hours in the afternoon from 1 until 2.30 in the afternoon on Good Friday. And of course, anytime by appointment, all you have to do is call and we'll make them time to be able to do that. But that's one great thing to be able to do before Easter is to try to really get a good confession and try to really clean out that soul to allow God's grace in. And again, a reminder about Easter, one of the masses in here is how you need to sign up either by calling the rectory or by signing up online with the sign of genius for one of the four Easter masses that we have. So please go ahead and do that so that we can ensure that people will be able to be accommodated. You don't get here early, don't arrive more than 15 minutes earlier because we have to clean up in between each of the masses, but you will have a seat because all the seats will be assigned because it'll be like coming in, you'll have an assigned seat, you'll come in and everybody shall be taken care of. So. Look forward to that, looking forward to Holy Week, and I just wanted to give you a heads up and take some time to read the letter and read this, and don't forget about the living stations, too, that are choir and uh, our young adults. They put on a nice show, uh, really doing a good way of being able to really incorporate that prayer of Holy Week. Okay, let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ, in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. So, you know, at the end of Mass, we always end with the prayer to St. Michael the Archangel, but before the blessing, uh, and that's right after the blessing, but before there's a big saint that we need to be able to pray to, not only because his feast was yesterday, but also because this is the year of St. Joseph. And so I want to conclude today's Mass, which comes the day after his official feast day, to ask St. Joseph's help and offer our prayer. To you, O blessed St. Joseph, do we come with our afflictions, and having implored the help of your most holy spouse, we confidently invoke your patronage also. Through that charity which bound you to the Immaculate Virgin Mary of God, and through the paternal love which you have embraced the child Jesus, we humbly beg you graciously to regard the inheritance which Jesus Christ has purchased by his blood, and with your power and strength to aid us in our necessities. O most one watchful guardian of the Holy Family, defend the chosen children of Jesus Christ. O most loving Father, ward off from us every contagion of error and corrupting influence. O oh, our most mighty protector, be kind to us and from heaven, assist us in our struggle towards the power of darkness. As once you rescued the child Jesus from deadly peril, so now protect God's holy church from the snares of the enemy and from all adversity. Shield too each one of us by your constant protection, so that supported by your example and by your aid, we may be able to live piously to die in holiness and obtain eternal happiness in heaven. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
go in peace. Let us pray the prayer to St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be your protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God help you, can we humbly pray, and to thou, Prince of Heavenly Hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell, Satan, and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the of the souls. Amen. Rejoicing in the gift of the Eucharist, we join in singing, You Are Mine. Come. 